How we all doing today? It's JV coming at you with a full breakdown of my new recording setup. This thing is an absolute beast and let me tell you, this rack is the tits. So this rack is capable of professional studio recording, recording live bands on stage. You can really do anything with this rack and the reason I got it is just because it's incredibly portable and it's going to allow me to go around and just travel and play music wherever I want to. So in this video we're going to go over the full rack build and why I chose these different pieces of equipment. We're going to talk about the pricing, the pros and cons of this type of a setup and we're also going to talk about if this thing is right for you. So. Let's get into it. The first thing to mention here, of course, is the Custom Rack by Circle 3 Designs. It weighs only about nine pounds with the lid, and the Pelican Flight case uh, weighs only about 16 pounds. Just some of the plus sides of this type of a rack setup. It's really versatile and incredibly lightweight for what it is. For comparison, the SKB6U is a 20 inch deep rack, and so the case is bigger. It weighs more, and it's still not even that much cheaper than this setup, which is really designed perfectly for the Apollo 8, which is 13 and a half inches deep. Of course, the brains of the operation, we've got my new MacBook Pro here. This is an M3 Pro chip. We've got 12 CPU cores and 18 GPU cores. And I've only done a couple of videos and maybe one or two songs on this thing, but it's so far one of the most powerful computers I've ever used. And I absolutely love the Space Black, of course. It goes with my rack setup pretty nicely, so that's a nice plus. At the top here, you're definitely gonna want a power conditioner if you're building a rack with equipment that's that's this expensive, um, in case you have a power surge or something like that. Make sure that you're getting the right current and voltage, and it gives you a bunch of outlets in the back so you can send it to the rest of your rack gear. Next up, we've got the Apollo 8 audio interface. This is one of the nicest audio interfaces that money can buy, and one of the reasons that I have this one is because, well, it's an investment. It's an investment in the sound quality that I want to get in my songs, but it actually has onboard DSP or digital signal processing with a quad core processor. And what this allows you to do is actually use plugins and effects in real time with almost zero latency while you're recording. So it really gives you a huge confidence boost to be able to use some plugins modeled after vintage equipment, the most sought after compressors and EQs, and it just sounds beautiful. So you'd think that an 8-channel interface is pretty limiting, but when you're spending money on Apollo gear, you're getting the nicest stuff. So this actually gives you up to 32 inputs if you expand the interface using ADAT cables or SPDIF cables. And so what I've done is I've got this next piece of gear here. This is a Scarlett Octo Pre Dynamics, which is 8 preamps and 8 compressors connected directly to my Apollo using ADAT cables, or maybe you know them better as optical cables. And what I did with the Scarlett Octo Pre is I got the version with the Dynamics because it's only about an extra $150 or so, and you get eight compressors. So that's a pretty good deal in my opinion. And it just makes it so when I'm recording drums, I can really gain up the microphones and I can actually put a little bit of compression on to really tame the peaks and really smooth out those transients. And so this is just a huge bang for your buck to be able to expand the Apollo series with an ADAT interface that has preamps and compressors all in a single space. Next up, we've got a Sterling Audio 8 channel headphone amplifier. And so the only reason I have this in here currently and not some sort of wireless in-ear monitor system is because well, first of all, I don't have an IEM system. And secondly, um, this is really cheap. It's only like a hundred bucks. And so you get eight headphone amplifiers and it takes two input signals. So I actually have two QSENs on the front of the Apollo, but I can actually route an additional two QSENs to this unit, which will then split them into eight signals. So in total, I can have 10 headphone outs coming out of this rack, which means I can record a full band, you know, trumpet players, sax players, drums, keyboardist, guitarist, you name it, um, headphones for everybody. Lastly, we've got two Art S8s down at the bottom, and effectively what these are are just XLR splitters. So XLR being mic cables, it just splits the signal into two paths. One of them is completely unaltered, which is what will get sent to the front of house at a live gig. And the other one is a transformer isolated output, which will get sent to this recording setup to be recorded without any interference from the phantom power being sent from the front of house. So you can get an XLR splitter snake, 
but in my opinion, if the front of house is sending phantom power, you don't want to have any signal degradation uh, or any other problems really with, um, you know, impedance or noise. And so um, this is just nice because it has a ground lift switch on the front and it has a pad switch as opposed to if you just have a splitter snake, you might have some signal quality issues. The Art S8s also kind of act as a patch bay, so I can plug my microphones right into the front and I don't have to worry about going into the back of the rack every time I'm trying to record, so just makes life a little bit easy, especially when recording drums. You know, I can just plug in all my drum ends in the front and uh, mix everything up on the laptop and it's uh, pretty quick. Pricing. So, this whole setup, not including the laptop, is about $4,200. Yes. It's a lot of money, but guys, this is a rack setup that I'm gonna use probably for the next decade or longer. It's something that I'm gonna bring with me everywhere, and I wanted to make sure that my gear was protected in this beautiful Pelican Flight case. For context, $4,200. If you're gonna go to a studio, that's $60 an hour. You're only gonna get about 70 hours of recording time, okay? That's not even two full weeks if you're going five days a week. And so you could maybe make, you know, a 10 song record once. You gotta pay again next time you go to the studio. So if you wanna be able to record professional music anywhere you go for the rest of your life, 4,200 bucks is a pretty good investment. And I've, I've recorded a couple albums. The last album was 13 songs. It costed about uh, $12,000. And so I could have actually bought like three of these setups and a bunch of plugins instead of going into that studio. So and I'm probably gonna record hundreds of songs with this rack. So I'm really not too worried about the price when it comes down to the value that I'm getting out of having a professional studio anywhere that I go. Pros and cons. Some of the pros that might not be super obvious, uh, you'll notice the very front of this rack, the actual rack extends about an inch beyond the rack rails, which means that the knobs are a little bit more protected uh, than a traditional type of rack like the SKB 6U with the flight case. Another pro, like I mentioned, we got 10 headphone outputs on this thing, so you can record a very large size band. You've got 16 inputs as well, so it's pretty versatile when it comes down to recording a large group. Obviously, with 16 inputs, you might be a little bit limited on drums. A lot of these IEM setups have 32 inputs. I just don't need 32 right now, guys. I'll be honest. I just don't have that big of a band. Some cons. So. In the back, unfortunately, some of the cables do stick out a little bit, and so when I'm putting it back in the case, they kind of rub up against the back of the case, so I might have to get these 90 degree angled TRS adapters uh, from Nutrick. Another con is that the 6U rack actually shipped with the rubber feet mounted to the very outside of the rack, and so they didn't really fit on top of this case very nicely, so what I did was I drilled new holes and I moved the rubber feet in a little bit, so now they fit perfectly inside of these grooves on top of the Pelican lid, and um, really, it's just a lot more secure that way. Another con, the edge is here when you pick up the whole case because it's about 45 pounds or so uh, with all the gear in it. They're pretty sharp. Um, so, you know, you gotta have a little bit of muscle on your arms if you're gonna be moving this thing around yourself. It does get pretty heavy. Another con worth mentioning, I think a couple of you guys are going to notice right away, is that the Apollo isn't a wireless interface. So a lot of the time with these in-ear monitor setups or live recording setups, you'll have a wireless system to allow you to do your headphone mixes individually on your phone or maybe go out into the venue to mix the front of house if you have to bring your own PA. One thing I have yet to try though is to create a hotspot on my phone and then use some sort of app that lets an iPad control the entire computer. And I think that would actually allow me to mix out in the middle of the venue. So. That's something that could work. Additionally, if you've got someone with you at the show, they can just do the headphone mixes while you guys are going through your, your sound check. I don't think it's that big of a deal. And and frankly, you know, given how good everything sounds coming through the Apollo, I'm pretty sure you could just do the headphone mixes before you even go to the show and everything's gonna sound pretty much the same as it does during practice. Finally, guys, a big con with the Art S8 is that these XLRs actually don't lock in front. So if you're on stage and you've got a bunch of XLRs plugged in here, the fact that there's no lock on here and they can just kind of slide right out is definitely a bit of a concern. You know, I might have to do some, some Googling to see if I can get some sort of a lock in there installed. So is this set up for you? If you're trying to record everywhere you go to make as much online content as possible, to grow your social media as much as possible, and really just to have a portable, flexible setup, 
I really think that this is something that you should consider. In my opinion, I love to watch a live band on YouTube, but I hate watching it if it's just a cell phone recording from the audience. It just doesn't sound good. And so what makes it great about this rack is you can actually make a compilation of all your friends taking videos from the crowd and put real professionally recorded audio of the show together, just putting this rack on stage. You'll see a bunch of live bands on YouTube that go out, you know, maybe in front of a coffee shop or they'll go out in someone's backyard or into a field and just run an extension cable and they'll record these really awesome videos. And how do they do that? Well, they probably have something like this. And so this type of setup allows you really to make your own music videos and your own live videos. And I'm probably gonna bring this rack setup a lot to my parents' house. They have this little boat house by the lake. And so to be able to put this down there and record professional quality vocals and saxophone and stuff, I'm pretty excited about that. And this will just fit right in the back of the car. It's super easy to unpack and it's super easy to plug in. So you don't even really need a car, guys. You could wheel this out to, you know, the, the bus or the subway. So really, if you're trying to make music on the fly, it really is a professional recording setup and it's probably the lightest and most portable one that I've ever seen so highly recommend this if you're playing in bands and you're trying to record your shows live just trying to expand your social media presence and your community around your music by uploading some super dope live videos that's about all I got for you today guys so if this is the first time you've been on my channel please uh, subscribe to my channel hit the bell icon give this video a thumbs up this is one of the first videos that I've actually made like this so Took me a couple of takes, not gonna lie. Just super excited about this and can't wait to get recording. So, see you in the next one. Sky.